Your Majesty, bless I Your Majesty. Yeah. Every day, Your praise will come from me for Your faithfulness to us. May Zion Majesty. Every day, your praise will surely be a scene of joy for me. Our Savior Almighty. Every day, your praise will come from me for your faithfulness towards me. May Zion Majesty. Every day, your praise will surely be a scene of joy for me. May Zion Majesty, yeah. For your gifting, for your gifting, I will praise you. I will praise you for your lifting, for your lifting. I will worship you for your gifting. Eternal Father, we thank you, Lord. Be thou exalted in all that we do, precious Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for this Sunday, this Sunday morning. Thank you for your children that have gathered here. Lord, whatever challenges that they came with, may they not go back home the same way that they came. Father, dissolve every heart sentence. May our hearts indict a good matter. And Lord, may we leave here better than the way we came, upgraded, refigurated, and better. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Champion shout fire. fire! Please walk up to eight people and say it's so nice to see you in so today's nice service. To the Spirit of God lives in me, in me, in me. He's given me the ability. So take a good look at me, at me. First and foremost, I'd like to especially thank the person of the Holy Spirit. Can you kindly join me? Can you kindly join me and say thank you, Holy Spirit? Please help me to celebrate our most holy esteemed father, Daddy Joshua Aguila. Say, Daddy, sir, we love you, Jesus, much. And please help me to celebrate our most holy esteemed brother, O.C. King. Say, most esteemed, sir, we love you, Jesus, much. For all of our newcomers, we'd like to welcome you to Champions Royal Assembly, North America, New Jersey. I am Pastor Eunice. And, and I'm one of the pastors in Champions. Today we have a privilege to bring you a message. You can kindly take your seat. God bless you, sir. Today's message, when I had the privilege to sit down with the Holy Spirit, and he gave me this message, 
I had to ask myself Am I a judgmental person? And why am I saying that? Because when you hear what this message is about You'll be careful how you judge people You'll be careful how you write people off one of the things, one of the tips that we're giving you about today's message that is more than what you see with your eyes. What you may see with your eyes is more than what you can even imagine. Can we kindly please turn our Bibles to Acts chapter 10? We're going to read about this. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 10. Travail chapter 10. Today's message is titled A Devoted Man. Because many of us, some of us in the Christian world, we talk about we're looking for a God fearing person, a God fearing man, a God fearing woman. Many of us said that even in relationships. I want to be with a God fearing woman. I want to be with a God fearing man. Even in business. I want a God-fearing person. Do you even know what God-fearing even means? It's more than a person even going to church. Because there's so many Christians that go to church that warm the seat of church. We have Christians. We have churchgoers. We have occasional Christians. You only see them when it's celebration. If they have pity for God, you see them Mother's Day. You see them Christmas. You see them New Year's. So they can cross the New Year's with God. You see them on Easter. You see them Easter because they have to honor their mother. They are on Mother's Day because they have to honor their mother. Father's Day sometimes. And sometimes maybe a birthday celebration. Or a naming ceremony. And yet such a person want to criticize. A devoted person. You may say, Pastor Eunice. I'm devoted. I come to church every Sunday. Is that really what devotion is? Let's read about someone. Who was not a Christian at all. But very, very devoted. Acts chapter 10 verses 1. Can we all kindly please read together? We'll all read it together in English. And then we'll allow our interpreter to read it in Creole. Yes, ma'am. Amen. That's my deaconess. Amen. Amen. Can we kindly please read verses 1 together? And it says, There was a certain man in Syria called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Verses 2. A devoted man and one that feared God with all his house, which get much arms to people and pray to God always. Please, my can you kindly please read Acts chapter one, verses Acts chapter ten, verses one and two. Dans la ville Syra, Cesare, qui gagne un homme qui te relé connaît. Il était capitaine d'un bateau, d'un bateau, soldat, mon pays, Italie, dans la mer Romaine. Connaît un homme qui t'a servi bon Dieu juif, yo. Lui même à toute famille, yo te gagne créatif pour bon Dieu. Il te fait un pile pour pauvre parmi peuple juif là. Amen. Amen. Can we please go to verse 1? This is a man by the name of Cornelius. Amen. Verses 1 were introduced to his profession. 
He's a centurion. Thank, thank God we have our most highly esteemed Dr. Miller in the house. Dr. Miller was also a part of our United States Air Force. He has children in the military. In the high summit of the military. When you look at Centurum, this is someone that commands a hundred soldiers. If you bring it into the American US, the US American Army, you will say that this particular person, Mr. Cornelius, is a four star general. And that means he has reached the height, which is the highest level. But we, but over here in part one, in verses one, there's nothing about God that's mentioned just yet. Then we now go to verses two. Keep it in mind, he's a centurion. He's a commander. A hundred soldiers are under him. He's really a boss. But yet the Bible said he's a devoted man. Someone who's trained to kill. At any point he can shoot and kill. He's trained in such a way. That even a hundred men will come to his aid. I want you to understand this. He can shoot and kill anything that's a threat. That's, that's a danger to even his country, to the citizens, and even to his boss. But yet, the Bible said he's a devoted man. Then it now says he's God fearing. How is the two able to reconcile? We have someone who's trained to kill. But yet, he's God fearing. Then it now says, with his house, it now gets personal. Then he, it says that he also gives to the poor. And then he also prays to God. So here you have a four-star general of the United States Army. Who the Bible is saying that, oh, this man is a general. But this general, he's devoted. He prays to God always. He gives to the poor. He's, he, um, his whole house also believes too. Where are we getting with this? Because the first thing you will look when you see a U.S. Army or military person with their uniform the first thing that comes to your mind is do you even think of this person even outside of their uniform who is this person when they're not in uniform because to you you just saw a military personnel but in the eyes of God, he's a devoted man. Why are we telling you? Why are we giving you this incense? Because there's a way that you can see someone in uniform. Based off their profession, you already written them off. You already judged them. Do you know many church circles, they're lacking God-fearing people? They're even lacking people who are devoted. 
You can have the same Christian praying against their boss at work. This Christian come to work late. Take long lunch hours, lunch, long of breaks. Your break is 30 minutes. All in the name of you using God to oppress people. You take a one hour lunch break. And if they're trying to talk to you, ah, it's because I'm black. The first card they pull because I'm black. The second card they pull, my God will judge you. A lot of churches are lacking devoted men. And the funny thing is, the same Christians are the ones that's judging their boss at work. What makes you think that God doesn't favor your boss? The same boss that you're praying against, Father, in the name of Jesus, he will be removed. And I'll own his company. The same, the same boss that you're praying over against. Say in the name of Jesus, you this boss that's tormenting me at work. As you trouble my Israel, I trouble your Israel. Father, as you remove him, I enter. <laughs> Let's look at Second Kings chapter five. Let's not lose the essence of this message. A devoted man. Because there's a way you can criticize your boss at work. But you don't know the mind of God. That what God has in store for even your boss. We're going to look at another person who was also has a similar storyline as Cornelius. Second Kings chapter five verses one, and it says, "Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria." was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leopard. Can you kindly please read from Sma? Amen. Once again, we're introduced to another military personnel. By the name of Naaman. He's a captain of Syria. The Bible said that he was very honorable. He served his master. He also, because of him, God gave deliverance unto Syria. The God of Israel was helping an enemy country because of their leader. Why are we saying all of this? Because you'll be surprised what your boss at, at work goes through. We're so quick to criticize people in high up. But you don't realize that they're still human beings just like you and I. This is a captain of Syria. Very honorable. But he had leprosy. When he puts on his um, clothes, you won't see the leprosy. But when he takes off the clothes, you see the leprosy. See, just because your boss comes to work with the Lamborghini, 
And he looks flashy. Oh, this is my boss. He, th he has it going on. You don't know what's going on with him at home. What if he didn't go to bed the whole entire night? And you're thinking that this boss is against me. See, why are we bringing you this message? Because welcome to Champions World Assembly. Yes. We are, this is a place where we believe in excellence. Usually we attribute tough leaders as being bad leaders. This leader is always on my back. They're always doing this, always on my tail. They're always doing this. Show me a person that has been, has produced results. That has been excellent without a tough leader in their life. You want to produce good quality? Sometimes you need someone to be hard on you. Many of you, many of us are wearing necklaces, diamonds. Some of us, our rings have diamonds in them. How is a diamond even made? It goes through fire. It goes under pressure. When you first see a diamond, it's very ugly. It's nothing desirable at all. Until it's now gone through the fire. It's now being processed. It's being tossed to the left. It's being tossed to the right. It's being shapened. To that piece of jewelry that will now be showcased that you will go and patronize that's the same thing for you think of yourself as an uncut diamond a raw diamond that your leader your superior your boss at work is shaping you on the show glass of excellence because in all honesty we don't like that leader that's tough on us we try to run away from them but in when you actually go to the heart of the matter, those types of leaders produce excellence in us. When you actually look at it, brothers and sisters, those are the type of leaders that you should never fight. When we actually, let's take it to school also so that everyone can relate. We don't like this one professor. When you go to ratemyprofessor.com all bad reviews. You'll have some students that will type letters. This, this professor needs to be fired. They're terrible at their job. Meanwhile, you don't even know that the, press, the professor has four children. He's trying to produce excellence in you. See, I'm sorry. You're at a church where we don't baby you, we don't pamper you for too long. We put fire in your behind. So that you can be the best and the quality men. Because too many Christians are weak. Reliant on the government. When circumstances come. They sink right in it. But yet at work. They're even second class citizens. Look at these men. Not Christians at all. But even the God that you serve still came to their aid. Why? Because of their hearts. Can we go to 1 Samuel chapter 16? See, brothers and sisters, why are we bringing you this message? Could it be that you're criticizing the boss at work? We're currently on this lesson. 
we are currently on this lesson that our most holy esteemed brother Osi King is discussing. What is God thinking? Do you even know that God thinks? The boss, the boss that you're criticizing. Did you even ask God Almighty? What is it about my boss? You never understood why God never answered your prayer. Concerning that boss that you've been praying tirelessly about. Some of you even did fasting concerning your boss at work. Father, I would not eat. 30 days. This my boss. And God is saying, man. What a big Ingrid. What a big monster. And you're like, God, me? It's you. Why? Because you never even cared to even ask. See, let's stop criticizing people because of what we see. Do you even know your boss behind the veil? What if your boss is really a great person? Because every tough person, when they're at home, they're gentle to somebody. They're nice to somebody. In all honesty, brothers and sisters, many of you are new here. But those of us who know our most holy esteemed brother Osi King, when we see the way he preaches, we're like, ooh. He looks like he's really tough. He looks like he's vicious. But when you come closer, you understand the man behind the veil in ministry that he really is caring. Why are we giving you this message? Because God actually does care. He even cares about your boss at work. The one that you've been praying against. The one that you talk, you bad mouth. He's still on the mind of God. The, and you, even as a Christian, he's still on your mind. Why? Why would you even criticize somewhere where you take your tights out and you come and pay tights? You're even contradicting yourself even as a Christian. This is the same job that has blessed you. You take tights out. You're coming to pay. Some of you will queue and come and stand. And you'll be praying to God Almighty. And the same place where you receive surplus. You go there. And you'll be praying against your boss. And you want God to open doors for you. How will he do that? See, whether you know or not, brothers and sisters, it's time to look beyond the uniform. Let's penetrate the fabric and let's get to know the people inside. Why do you have to hear a bad report about your boss at work? For you to finally realize that they're human beings. Oh, because it, he looks like he has everything. We don't see him all the time at work. He's supposed to be the CEO of this company. He takes a lot of vacation days. We're the one doing all the work. After all, we build this company. You did not build this company. I'm sorry, you didn't build this company. You only started 25 years ago. Do you even know the birth of this company? Do you know the sleepless nights that your boss went through? For the sake of the company, your boss has high blood pressure. You 
you don't think of it like that because you see a nice suit well fitted nice shave a Tesla parked outside you don't even know that his wife has stage 4 cancer it didn't cross your mind after all he's the boss he has all the money why are we telling you brothers and sisters I want to share a story with you Lord have mercy see in all honesty all glory be to God I'm a council person in my town uh, so basically let me make it simple and easy I'm a government official in my town I had terrible experiences with police officers in my lifetime I can't stand police even growing up because I had some family members that was in the gang and I had like terrible issues with police anything police I detest I couldn't stand police officers whatsoever and then also hmm Drive it, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> ticket, 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 ticket. <laughs> it's not praiseworthy, in all honesty. I felt like every courthouse in every county. They knew me at one point in life. It was very annoying. Amen. Amen. It was very annoying. It was one particular um, town, Jesus. I'm even offended right now about even saying. The judge knew me by name. Before the document comes, he was like, hi, Eunice. I'm like, Jesus. 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 And I knew this, oh God, it's, this is terrible. I knew this particular judge. So I, so when I when I'll get my um my tick my document my court order, I'll see the judge. I'll know all the judges. I'll say mm, I don't want this one. <laughs> I'll now call the courthouse and I'll ask them. So when is Judge Rosenberg going to be there? It's an actual judge. I'm telling you the honest truth. And then I want to go on his day. Because the moment I see him, he will say she's forgiven. So I'm like, I always want to go where Judge Rosenberg is there. Anything police. I didn't like it. Until when I became a council person. The department that they made me in charge of. Police. <laughs> I was so angry. I was like, why do I got to deal with these people? When it finally dawned on me that these people, that they're really people, I've worked with some of the most incredible, excellent set of human beings. And it came from the police department. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you need to remove the veil and get to know them on a personal level. Because I had this whole idea of the man in the uniform. I couldn't stand them. I'm telling you the honest truth. When I come in contact with police, I'll be really nasty. When they knock on the window at the time, my first answer is, what do you want? It's not good morning, good afternoon. Good what do you want? Why did you stop me? 
I know my rights. I'm very quick to I know my rights. I'm not a lawyer, but I know how to use the law. I will tell them that I have the right to talk because according to my First Amendment right, and they'll be just looking at me. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. I still have to give you this ticket. <laughs> But it took for me to be in this particular position. I had the privilege to even work with the chief of New Jersey. And when I tell you, he's an excellent man, Lord. And the way he runs his department with excellence. But you can't expect a leader like that to be lily livered. You can't expect a leader like that to always be babying. If I'm a chief of police and I'm running a police department, how am I supposed to baby all the police? That means we're in trouble in the town. We're in trouble with the state. So sometimes we need to look at our tough leaders as them trying to pull that place of excellence out of us. Because we criticize them. But we don't remember that there's still people just like us. See, brothers and sisters, I did a personal study on what we're about to read. On this particular person. Why? Because God can reject people. They don't like to say that in church. The same God that may be so kind can be very terrible. And if that person falls on the bad side of God, God can be very, very, very terrible. He's not your mate. God knows how to deal with people mercilessly but we don't like to mention that side of God but that's the real side of God because I wanted to find out why certain people were rejected and why certain people are promoted 1 Samuel chapter 16 can we kindly please read verses 7 verses 7 can we kindly please read this all together and it says but But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or his height, or his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord see not as man seeth. For man look at out the outward appearance, but the Lord look on the heart. Amen. You can read my. Amen. Who was this being talked about? Eliab. This this is Eliab that was actually being talked about. When the sons of Jesse was presented before Samuel the seer. The very first son of Jesse. He came out. This and Eliab was also military personnel. He's tall. He looked good. He's strong. And God was like. No, it's not him. He's not the next king of Israel. And 
And Sam, and whether you know or not, Samuel the seer was actually fooled by this. He even told God. He said, look at him, Lord. Ah, he's tall. This is the one to be the king of Israel. He's good looking. He can really defend our country. God was like, I reject this guy. Don't be fooled by how he looks on the outside. His heart is bad. He doesn't have a good heart. And then he now see, God begins to speak to Samuel the seer. I don't see the way man sees. I go beyond the fabric of the clothing. Beyond the good looks. Beyond the physique. I'm looking at the heart. That's why we said a devoted man. The boss at your job. They come to work. The one that you said that is wicked. But in the mind of God, his heart may be so pure. That's why we said be careful how you write people off. Many Christians are criticizing success that they will never see because there's a law of homogeneity universal law <laughs> whatever you criticize <laughs> you will never attract <laughs> you say you, you want to own a company <laughs> meanwhile the company that you're working for <laughs> you're running it down <laughs> that business will never succeed I'm sorry <laughs> no matter the profit that you go to <laughs> it's a standing law that business that you ran down your own business will not succeed because it's a standing law whatever you criticize you will never attract so if you're criticizing your boss and you're the head of the household at your at your house just know your wife will rubbish you your children will rubbish you and everyone in your house will rubbish you because you're criticizing someone in authority yet you are someone in authority why are we saying this because it's high time that as Christians we stop writing people off you're not God you didn't, if God didn't write you off you have no audacity to write anyone off we need to get a we need to get to that point where we do know people beyond their profession get to know the person inside what's the quality of their heart we gave you two examples Naaman who had leprosy we gave you Cornelius a devoted man interestingly God came to both of their aid such a person especially a devoted man God will never see that they will always remain in their trouble you wonder why your boss at work when they fall into a trouble God always comes to their rescue they always receive help because of the kind of heart that they have in all honesty brothers and sisters the same prophet Elisha who was a prophet for Israel? Was the same prophet that was used to take away the leprosy of Naaman, a commander of a Syrian um, army. Syria was actually an enemy to Israel. The God of Israel was helping Syria, the enemy. Because of one man. The heart of Naaman. Even though he had a boss. He even said. 
that my my master is honorable. He even told Elisha. He said, Prophet, please don't be offended. I believe in your God. But as I go back, I have a master that does voodoo, that erects idols. He would want me to do it with him. So even as you have helped me, I pray that your God will not be offended with me and Elisha told him no ask yourself as a Christian and only you can examine your heart what kind of heart do you have too many Christians are critics but not looking at themselves in Meanwhile, the one that they're criticizing before God, God is interested. And you don't have to be a Christian for God to be interested in you. God is interested in such people because they're very devoted. They're devoted in giving. When you look at even the mafias today, or the mafias back then, very vicious in business but before God all their children were all baptized the reason why the Catholic Church has so much influence and is standing today because you see them pouring money into the church pouring money into the church but you the Christian critic CNC CNC, the Christ, the critic, the um Christian critic. <laughs> to give five dollars, you squeeze it. <laughs> You'll be really angry, Pastor. Want to eat my money? <laughs> Your money can't buy this suit for me. Not to be offend, not to offend you. Your money can't buy this suit for me. This is not to offend you. This suit costs more than some of your offerings. It can't. We're not saying this to offend you. But even you have some Christians in church. Very stingy and giving. Oh, your sheesh, your mm -hmm. Some will even see the church door closed down before they even give. Mm -hmm. Some even, even if they have pity on the pastor, mm -hmm. if the pastor, mm -hmm. pastor cries a little bit, mm -hmm. they'll say, Pastor, we'll give you $30. Mm -hmm. Or we'll give you $50. Mm -hmm. And you want to criticize these people in authority that even at the end of the day when they when you check some of the tax um deductibles they have god in mind they have church in mind and you want god to answer the prayer that you've been praying against them meanwhile the well the air, the air conditioned church that you're sitting in where you can cross your leg and sit comfortably they're the one paying rent or you or you're saying that oh this my boss didn't you read what Cornelius was doing the money that he was making he was given to help poor people God looks at the heart, brothers and sisters. It's high time that we see the way that God sees. We didn't lose the sight of this lesson. That's not a truth. The objective of this lesson is that you see the way that God sees. So right where you're seated, pray this prayer. Say, Lord, help me to see the way you see. Father, help me to see the way you see. Because in all honesty, we criticize something that is supposed to be good and we say it's evil. And the thing that is evil, we say that is good. 
like our president right now president joe biden i'm not a democrat so i'm not here to to, to help bring for the political party do you know how many christians criticize our president he's from he's of the devil well i can't wait for you to become president let's see how you run this country because america is a beast only his children and his wife knows what he's going through to tell you the honest truth many of you who criticize our, pre our president have you even thought to even ask God what is this president Lord how do you feel about our president you didn't even care to do so you just open your mouth conspiracy theory he's, he's working with this he's, he's this and you're speaking against who God has placed in office and this is the same God you want to prosper you and tomorrow you say that Lord promote my child where is he going to promote your child to when you're criticizing the one he placed in office someone else's child we don't think like that see whether you agree with me whether you disagree with me I told you I'm not a Democrat Democrat. Our president is really not evil. I asked God about him. Even in this church, God has revealed our president to us. He has good intention for this country. Many of you were here for the global prophecy. That we need to pray for our president. Because he's the gateway for, e for evil not to enter into this country. But they're pushing him hard against the ground. They're really pushing his back hard against the ground. We heard about all of this in our global prophecy on the 31st night. We even heard, we even knew that our president was going to fall sick. That he will not be able to rule for a certain period of time. We knew all of this. The God that reveals. So you mean to tell me that God that revealed this to us on 31st night will now say that this one that I put in office is evil. You that's talking, have you even checked your heart? Because one thing, one thing I fear about God, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. When God is checking the heart, He will never give you a notice. You will never know when God is checking your heart. As I'm sitting right now, He's checking some of you right now. You may say, Pastor, you're spooking me out. I'm not spooking you out. Even if you decide not to come here again, just know that this seed has been planted. He will search your heart at any given moment. Seven sons, let that sink in. Seven. One came past before the prophet rejected number two came Pass before the prophet rejected number three came Pass before the prophet rejected all the way to number seven the one that was in present the one that they gave up on the one that they condemned the one that they wrote off that's why I said be careful how you write people off because the one that you wrote off in the morality in the judgment of your morals can be the one that God will say that that's the very one I want it happened with King David the Bible said the Lord told Samuel the seer this, that's one of my favorite parts of the story he said none of you will sit down 
None of you won't eat. None of you won't drink until the one that you wrote off. Until the one that you criticized. Until the one that you delegated to the background now comes through. And he came in and he became the king over them. The ones that wrote him off, he was now their king. That's why I say, be careful. Because you don't know how that person's heart is with God. Because in all honesty, you don't have the judgment of God to even judge such heart. If you do, how's your condition of your heart? Because there's some Christians that have gone to hell. Let's not make and no mistake about that. And there's some people, some righteous men that have also gone to heaven. Because I ask myself this. Why is it that there's some people outside the four corners of the church? They're succeeding. Meanwhile, you that come to church sun up, sun down. You never miss church. You know every sermon that the minister has preached. You can quote them verbatim. Word for, word for word you can quote them word for word that as most esteemed brother C. King comes he will sing two songs then he will kneel down and pray after he kneels down and pray he will tell all of us to shake each other hand you know all of this and your life haven't changed you need to check yourself why are we saying this brothers and sisters because it's high time we stop criticizing people that we shouldn't criticize sometimes we need to be careful how we judge people and Christians are going to happy hour with it very very excited with judging people meanwhile you don't know the standing with God why do you think that somebody like El Chapo Lord, when the Lord used him as an example I said God you remember you know him yeah. even God knows El Chapo do you even know who El Chapo is he's a drug lord big drug lord from Colombia <laughs> yeah yeah I know him from Colombia but you'll be surprised <inaudible> on the mind of God <inaudible> the kind of heart that El Chapo had <inaudible> but yeah you criticize him <inaudible> he's selling drugs <inaudible> he's doing this <inaudible> do you know he gave to the poor <inaudible> he even built prisons for Colombia <inaudible> <inaudible> the prison that he went to <inaudible> <inaudible> he even built it <inaudible> schools <inaudible> etc you in your village you haven't built nothing you only build one mansion that your family members are doing witchcraft to fight you and you want to criticize El Chapo who has done something for the country has done something for the community. You'll be surprised what your boss has done for even the community. Please, don't take it in the wrong way. I'm not telling you to go be like El Chapo. Please. I thank God that this is on record. So if you go and do it, I say they have a recording. It will go on YouTube. Listen. listen. But the essence of this message is that there are people in authority. They may not go to church like you do. But in the heart of God, the mind of God, they think about God. And such a people, you can pray against them. And you'll be thinking that you're doing God a favor. Meanwhile, you're not doing God a favor at all. And it doesn't take God much to come to the aid of such a person. 
So brothers and sisters, we're introducing this lesson to you because we know many of you want it came here for birthday celebration and some of you are hungry, you hear your stomach. So you don't say that Pastor Eunice, Papa is not here today. You're using your long preaching to keep us. So we'll cut this short. But go home with this. When you go to work, look at your boss differently. Because the boss that you can be so excited. Who just announced their retirement? You are throwing party. You are throwing party. Ah, today my enemies, father, you have disgraced my enemies. You, and we're asking you, ah, Ma, today you are happy. What's going on? Hey! God has answered me. God has answered me. God is good. That wicked boss that I had at work. Very, very wicked. God has delivered me from my hands of my enemies. God has delivered me from the hands of my enemies. He has said he will retire. Isn't this not God? <laughs> Meanwhile, when you find out the matter, he's re he retired because he has cancer. And then you're like, oh. 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 See, brothers and sisters, why are we saying all of this? It's time to look at things differently. And let's bring it, let's also bring it to the church circle. Your ministers are human beings too. Your ministers are human beings too. Stop looking for a perfect pastor. You will never find it. Are you even a perfect member? And stop making the news of the minister big news. I heard the pastor did this. I heard the pastor do it. If we do it to you, stop coming to church. You even said that I'm going to write that Joshua and Gila email. You, some of you even threatened to sue church. I'm suing them. They embarrass me. Emotional damage. You damaged us emotionally too. See, brothers and sisters, all of us desire to go up in life. Amen. But be careful how you criticize those who are up in life. You don't know what they're going through. You're not the only one with the challenge. Just because some people don't make theirs all out in the open does not mean that they don't have challenges. Be careful how you try to criticize your pastor. Oh, well, I heard that the pastor did this. I heard he bought that. You, didn't you buy car? Didn't you buy new shoes? Didn't you get your hair done? Oh, um, I don't think our minister is pure. Are you pure? Are you even pure? So please, by the mercies of God, stop criticizing people. If there's something about a leader that's questionable to you, instead of making it a hot topic the best person to talk to is the master of the universe rather than criticizing people in authority why don't you pray for them because there's no authority that God did not ordain there's no authority that God did not ordain can you guys can you please do me this favor please 
How many of you really do it? Some of you won't do it because you'll be like, that's you already offended me. It's okay. How many of you will really go to work this time and look at your boss with a different eye? Because that report that your boss had to write against you, you'll be surprised when they went home. They actually prayed to God and said, Lord, may this, may this be a case that is nothing. Do you know how many people that's in authority that desire children? They have a big house. It's empty. They hear their own voice. They have to even use their maid as family members. But you, that works for them. You're surrounded by family all around. You'll be surprised how your boss even looks at you and even admires you. Even wish that they were even you. But because of their outward appearance, because of the fine looks, because of the professionalism, you already wrote them all. My prayer for you is that you'll not write people off that God has not written off. Brothers and sisters, I'm glad that we were able to bring this message to you. Once again, we're introducing this lesson, a devoted man. Remember the universal law. Whatever you criticize, you'll never attract. So if you want to be a success, make a decision today that you will stop criticizing people who are successful. If you also want to be an authority, make it a decision today you will stop criticizing people who are in authority. Whether they are a pastor, whether they are a boss at work, whether they are highly influential, Stop criticizing people. Stop writing people off. And once again, please talk to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to see the way you see. Help me to see things the way you see. Even as you begin to talk to the Lord, we just want to add this. We had this lesson in the beginning of the year. It's to tailor the whole entire year. And that lesson is titled It's on our YouTube channel Champions TV North America Looking at the Unseen Looking at the Unseen this whole entire year is about looking at the unseen. What does that mean? Whatever you see with your eyes is more than what you have already seen. That's the essence of this lesson. Stop looking at people based off their professionalism. Because when they take off their uniform, who are they really? Even many of you you came to church all of you look beautiful I don't want to speak because I'm the pastor and I know some of you but let's say paraventure I didn't know you can I get to know you beyond the clothes that you wore that when I come close to you that in my mind I didn't write you off it's high time we do that even in church it's high time we do that in the Christian world please kindly bow down your head and say Lord help me to see the way that you see things God bless you all Your praise will come from me For your faithfulness was me